The title of this message will be Change Your Fruit. Change Your Fruit. And our scripture reading, those of you who've got your Bibles here, you can follow with me. Proverbs 4, verse 20 to 23, I'm going to read out of the New King James Version. Verse 20, My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it springs the issues of life. Just say with me, issues of life. That is a very important phrase that we need to not only understand, but we must have revelation knowledge of. Uh, Let me read our text verse out of uh, the Amplified Bible. That is this last verse, Proverbs 4, verse 23. Keep and guard your heart with all vigilance, and above all that you guard. For out of it flow the springs of life. Now, those of you who know what a spring is, who of you can tell me what is a spring? What do you think? What is a spring? Flowing water. Flowing water. It's, it's water coming out of the ground. Can I, can I explain it like that? You know, so it's, it's water coming out of the ground. It's, 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 you know, in those days they called it living water. It's like that water is alive. You know, so uh, it says here, out of the flow, out of the flow, the springs of life. You know, so you get the idea. It's it's like, it is like a, a issue, a, something that flows out. You know. So we know that you know it is time for us to change, and time is running out. We're living in the last days. We cannot play church anymore. We must change, and you know that's got a lot to do with the grace of God. The grace of God is still available for us. The question is, are we going to change or not? It is time for the church to change. Jesus is coming back for a glorified bride. It is the season of change still. It's a season of grace. And one of the most difficult things for human beings to do is to change. We would rather stay in our comfort zones and rest and resist change. And that that comes natural for us, isn't it? Even with the best of intentions, change eludes us. And that is because when it comes to true, positive, lasting change, the only real path forward is God and His purpose for our lives. You know, that is the only way that change will be sustainable when we do it not in our own power, but in the power of God. So, uh, I want to urge you to give up the things that waste your time and dedicate as much time in these last days as possible your relationship with God. I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about real relationship. That is very, very important. You know, and you also your God-ordained covenant relationships with the people in your life. You know, that is also very important. Do not let it slip away with no direction or purpose. And one of the most important aspects for us as born-again believers to change is to have a teachable spirit. You see, when you are selfish, when you are self-righteous, you don't have a teachable spirit. So we really need to have a teachable spirit. 
And we need a change of heart. So we as born-again believers must have a change of heart. It will not help you at all to change the world around you. A lot of times we want to change our surroundings, you know. And then we feel, well, we feel better now, but that lasts only for a day or an hour. I remember when I gave my heart to the Lord and I went home that night. I slept like a baby. The next morning when I got up, man, everything around me was new. I walked out of the front door and I, when I breathed in, even the air was so fresh and new. And I looked at the trees and it was new, it was green. And I heard the birds, everything that came in through my five physical senses. Everything, the whole, my whole surrounding was new. And I stood there in awe. And then I realized that nothing is new. I am new. I had a change of heart. You see, it will not help you, the, you to change what is around you. We need a change of heart. And that could be very dangerous. You know, we are living in the last days. The spirit of the Antichrist is busy working in this world right around us every day. And the spirit of deception is even working in churches today. That is so sad. And part of this deception is that we must change our world, our environment, and our surroundings. You know, we must keep up with this world's way of doing things in order for us to change our lives. And it sounds so good, but it is actually a lie from the devil. You know to conform us to this world. So that we, the church, can become like this world. So when we change our surroundings, we are influenced by this world. And we think it is a good thing. And it is the will of God. And that is how the spirit of this world conditions us. But we forget sometimes that the Holy Spirit is living within us. We read in Romans 12 verse 2, and I'm going to read it out of the message. All of us know that scripture that says that we must renew our mind. But let me read it to you out of the message. Listen to this. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention. On God you'll be changed from the inside out readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it unlike the culture around you always dragging you down to its level of immaturity God brings the best out of you develops well-formed maturity in you. You see, the Bible tells us that God and His Word must change us from the inside out. We need a change of heart. It is in our responsibility to take authority over our surroundings and the world around us. And then you can change the world around you as well with the authority of God. But then it means that you already changed from the inside. And this was God's original plan before the fall of man. And it is still His plan for us as born-again believers. Let us read Genesis 1 verse 27 to 28. And I'm going to read out of the New King James Version. So God created man in His own image. In the image of God, He created him. Male and female he created them. Then God blessed them and God said to them, Be fruitful, 
multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. You see, actually, that is the first place where God cut the covenant with man. And God empowered him, mankind, gave him authority. We read here where God said, Be fruitful. Just look at your neighbor. Tell him or her. Good morning if you did not greet him or her as yet. Look at your neighbor. Goedemorgen. Good morning. Tell your neighbor. Be fruitful. You see, that is what God, when he blessed Adam and Eve, what he said to them. Be fruitful. It is empowerment. You see? So God created Adam and Eve with this image of God, His image, His nature inside of them. And then God blessed them and told them to be fruitful. See, the meaning of the word fruitful here is to bear or bring forth fruit, to grow or to increase. You see, we are on this earth as believers to change the world around us in line with God's will and word. Now take note of the word fruit. Today I want to talk to you about the fruit of the Spirit. You know, all of us know about the fruit of the Spirit. And uh, let me just remind you and remind myself, it is not my fruit. It is the fruit of the Spirit with a capital letter. The fruit of God's Spirit. So I want to talk to you about that kind of fruit. The fruit of the Spirit and change. We may not realize it, but the purpose of the fruit of the Spirit is to change us as born-again believers from the inside out. So what is our prophetic word for 2023 and onwards? It's going to be a year and a time of sanctification and transformation into Abundant life. Who have you already realized through this year up till now that a lot of times when you ask God for things and a lot of times when you stand in faith that it seems as if the attacks of the devil just increase more and more. You see, look at our prophetic word. It is a time of purification. God wants us to change from the inside out. God is more concerned of what is happening inside of us than what is happening in the world around us. Because the change will not come from the outside that is godly. It will come from the inside. And then it will manifest to the outside around us. You see, we've got our own opinions, our own ideas, our own mindset our own reality but God wants our mindset our reality and, and 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 our outlook on life to be in line with his will in his word and his purpose for our lives so that is why we must change from the inside out so It also means that for us as believers, we must develop godly character. And we must maintain that character within us. And when I say we, I mean actually that we must allow the Holy Spirit to do it in His power. You can hold an apple in your hand and admire its color, the size of the apple and the smell. However, you will never know how good that apple is and you will never experience its nourishment unless you eat that apple. And we can even take it further. Then you will experience the influence of that apple in your body. It's healthy to eat an apple. 
We know the old people said an apple a day keeps the doctor away. So I'm just using the apple as, a, as an example, you know. It's the same with the fruit of the Spirit. It is time for us to take that bite, to eat, to make it part of our body, of our whole being, to do something, to change from the inside out. We cannot play church anymore. Faith without works is dead. We cannot sit in the church every Sunday, read our Bible every day, and we do nothing with the Word of God. It is not revelation knowledge within us. God wants to change us from the inside out. Listen, we are in this world. We are not from this world, but we are in this world. And we are influenced by this world. Whether you are a born-again believer or not, whether you are a faith giant or not, this world will influence you. Every day when you get up, and you look at the news and you have to deal with things, the things of this world, you know, then you will experience the depression of this world and it will become more and more heavy from the outside, the influence. But where is the Holy Spirit for a born-again believer? Who can tell me? In your heart, it's on the inside. So the moment that you tap into God, the moment that you make that connection, the moment that you pray, the moment that you have your quiet time, you know, God works from the inside out and throws off all the burdens and the care of this world. And you can walk in the power of the Holy Spirit once again. But if we don't connect with God, if we don't stand in a living relationship with Him, if we don't allow the power of the Holy Spirit to do that for us, we will live under this oppression. And we will never get to the place through sanctification to the abundant life that God has for us. So, do you realize and do I realize that we are actually filled with God? Who of you can tell me something about God, our God, God Almighty, who, who, who created heaven and earth? Can you tell me something about Him? Anybody? Just say something that comes up in your mind about our God. He's a loving God. What else? He's omnipresent. He's omniscient. He's almighty. He's all-powerful. He's the creator of heaven and earth. He's the one that just said a word. And things happened. That is our God. All right. Keep that in mind. Let's read Proverbs 4 verse 23. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it springs the issues of life. You see, God placed certain sources in the spirit of a born-again believer, which He has specifically designed to work effectively in order to produce powerful results and to provide everything needed for successful Christian living. These resources are already available to us as born-again believers. We have it all. However, do we not allow these sources and these forces to change us and to work through us? God gave us His everything. God wants us whole, spirit, soul, and body. We read in Romans 5, verse 5 in the New King James Version. No hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. The love of God. It's poured out in our hearts. Can somebody just give me a definition of God that we read in the Bible? God is love. God is light. God is life. So God is love. So when you are born again, the love of God is shed abroad in your heart. So it means that it is not only the love of God because God is love. God is shed abroad in your heart. 
That is the God, the Almighty God, the one that you said, that's omnipotent, om omniscient, that is the creator of the heaven and the earth. He is shed abroad in your heart. As a born-again believer, you have God within you. You are in Christ and Christ is in you. You are connected to God. And God wants us whole spirit, soul and body. Because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. The King James Version says, the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. You know, God has filled us with Himself. God is love. And we are full of Him to make us whole, spirit, soul, and body. People, do we really have a revelation knowledge of this? Do we really know who is in us? Do we really know who we are in Christ Jesus? We read in Colossians 2 verse 9, and I'm going to read out of the New Living Translation. Listen to this carefully. For in Christ lives all the fullness of God in a human body. Did you comprehend this? Do you understand this? Do you have revelation knowledge? Let me read it again. For in Christ lives all the fullness of God Almighty in a human body. Wow. The fullness of God Almighty lives in us. It is time to wholly rely on God. It is time to rely on and allow the power of God, the Holy Spirit, to sanctify us from the inside out. We should be busy with a process of sanctification. Remember, once again, our prophetic word for 2023 and onwards. It's a year and a time of purification, sanctification, changing from the inside out, and transformation. Then you will be transformed into abundant life. You cannot be transformed if you don't allow the Holy Spirit to sanctify you. Let me read Romans 5 verse 5 out of the message. In alert expectancy such as this, we never left feeling shortchanged. Quite the contrary. We can't route up enough containers to hold everything God generously pours into our lives through His Holy Spirit. Wow, people. So you've got all the potential within you. Do you know how to tap into your God-given potential? Once again, in Proverbs 4 verse 23, Solomon, one of the wisest men that ever lived, tells us that we must keep our hearts with all diligence. Our text verse. We must protect our spirits. Many Christians does not like this because it means that they must do something. That they must become doers of the word. Not know something, do something. They must get out of their comfort zone and work. The Bible tells us that faith without works is dead. James 2 verse 17. In order to live a successful Christian life, we need to learn to tap into the sources of life that is within us. We must be diligent. We cannot be lazy and sloppy anymore. We cannot play church anymore. We need to read the Word, meditate the Word, confess the Word, work the Word, live the Word. Not building on sand, but on the rock. The man who built his house on the sand and the man who built his house on the rock heard the same word. What's the difference? The man who built on the rock became a doer of the word. And then there is, they experienced the same storm. The one who built on the sand's house was washed away. 
the one who built on the rock, who became a doer of the word, his house stood. It, it, it remained steady in the storm. We need to learn to tap into the resources of life. We must be diligent. Lay hold onto the source of life. Get into the Word, and the Word will get into you. Renewing your mind and becoming revelation knowledge in your spirit, becoming alive in your spirit, that is faith. Faith cometh by hearing. And hearing the word of God. Where is faith? On your spirit. Get into the word and the word will get into you. Then put it into action. Work the word and the word will work for you. That's not what I'm saying. God is saying that. And God cannot lie, by the way. He says in his word, he's no man that he can lie. His word is the truth. Work the word and the word will work for you. Live the Word, and the Word will live in and through you. Honor the Word, and the Word will honor you. We read in Matthew 12, verse 33, in the New Living Translation, a tree is identified by its fruit. If a tree is good, the fruit will be good. If a tree is bad, its fruit will be bad. So I'm asking you this morning, what is in your heart? How do you know what is in somebody's heart? What does the Bible say? Who can tell me? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Just listen to what somebody says. You know, talking negative all day, wanting to fight and quarrel and this and that. And you will see exactly what is in that person's heart. Is that the fruit of the Spirit? No. It's the light of the devil. What is in your heart? We read in Matthew 12, verse 34, and that is how Jesus feels about this. Because Jesus said, You have minds like a snake pit. How do you suppose what you say is worth anything? When you are so foul-minded, it's your heart, not the dictionary, that gives meaning to your words. That is the message translation. And God always looks at the attitude of the heart. We're reading Galatians 5, verse 22 to 23 about the fruit of the Spirit. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. Now tell me, what is the first fruit mentioned here? Love. That's right. Love. So you see, the more you draw near to God, praying and reflecting on His Word, the more you will experience the fruit of the Spirit in you and in your life. So where should you start? The fruit of the Spirit, not fruits. Take note. The fruit of the Spirit, not fruits. You know, I, I looked for an orange uh, to, to demonstrate this to you, but unfortunately I couldn't find one yesterday or today. But I want to explain something to you. If you take an orange or a nachi, ne, a narke, wat ons noem, in Afrikaans, a nectarine or whatever you want to call it, um, a tangerine. It is a fruit, isn't it? Okay, so if you peel it, you will find different segments inside. Who of you never ate uh, a tangerine or an orange or something or even a lemon? Nobody. You, all of you ate it so you can relate with what I'm saying. So if you peel it, you will find different segments inside. Am I right? Okay. So, uh, is it one fruit? If you have an orange in your hand, is it one fruit? Yes, all of us agree. Who don't agree? All right? It's, it's, it's kept together by the, by the peel, the outside part. 
but then there's different segments inside. All right. It's one fruit with different segments. So what is the main characteristic of this fruit? If you, let's talk about an orange. What is the main characteristic of that fruit? Who can tell me? Rian, you should know. What is the color? Oh, there's Rian. You see, he's a cheetah. Orange. <laughs> All right, so it's orange. The name of the fruit is orange. The color is orange. It tastes like an orange. It smells like an orange. Isn't it? All right. The skin is orange. Every segment is orange of color, smell, and uh, smells and, and tastes like an orange. It is the same with the fruit of the Spirit. That's why it's called fruit and not fruits. We need to understand this. The main characteristic of the fruit of the Spirit is the love of God. Every segment has the color of the love of God. It smells like the love of God. It tastes like the love of God. The skin of the love of God is seen everywhere. Like the skin of the orange, it keeps all segments together. That is the main characteristic. Now you will start to understand the fruit of the Spirit. We cannot be children of God without the love of God. It is our main characteristic as born-again believers. It keeps everything together. It keeps the marriage together. It keeps the, the family together. It keeps the church together. It keeps everything together. Only if we allow it to flow through us. What is in your heart will come out of your mouth and your actions. You see, it cannot be the fruit of the Spirit without the love of God. And I want to encourage you, love on purpose. Love is not, it does not start with an emotion and a feeling. I'm talking about the love of God. It starts with a choice. When you make the choice to love, with the love of God, the rest will follow, the emotion will come. Sometimes, Pastor Karin is not here today, she's not feeling too well, but I can, I can skin her so big. So sometimes, when Pastor Karin, my wife, comes into the room or into where I am, and I look at her face, I can see, whoa. And I think all the husbands can relate to that. And then, you know, I just very carefully ask her, what is wrong, my dear? <laughs> and then she will tell me, you know what? Today I don't like you at all. I said, what? Are you a child? She said, yes, but I still love you. You see, that's the love of God. Unconditional love. And let me tell you that we are at a place in our marriage. You know, uh, she's got a strong personality. And I have a strong personality. And uh, sometimes, you know, we can, we can uh, get cross with one another. Previously, in the beginning, it lasted for about a week or two. But these days, no more than five minutes because of the love of God. And that's so awesome. You see... The love of God keeps everything together. And that's why I want to encourage you today to live on purpose. Do not wait for the feeling. It will come later. You will be amazed about the joy it brings. You see, when, because when the love, the issue, the stream of God's love starts to flow, 
the rest of the fruit of the Spirit will flow as well. And you will be amazed because then it releases the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of God, the fullness of God within you that will change you from the inside out and it will also change the surrounding and the people around you. Who of you know Smith Wigglesworth? He's a, he was a man of God. Now, I read one of his books and uh, he said there that his wife went to church. He didn't serve God. You know, that man, they said that he raised, well, God through him, raised about 13 people from the dead. He said that when he walks along the road and he realized that the Holy Spirit is not with him because he communicates with the Holy Spirit constantly, he turns around, he goes back where he last, remember, you know, in the corner of this street, I communicated with the Holy Spirit and he takes it from there again. And the fruit, the issues of life of God flowed through him. But he didn't serve God at first. His wife went to the church. She prayed for him every day. He was in the rebellion. And one evening when she went to church, it was very cold. He locked the doors. When she came back, she couldn't enter the house. She slept on the cold cement at the back door. It was very cold. The next morning when he opened the back door, unlocked the back door and opened it, she walked in, smiled, kissed him and said, what can I make for you for breakfast, my husband? The love of God changed that man totally and he became that man of God. Unconditional love. Love by choice. Don't wait for the feeling you will be amazed. And I want to categorize in, in closing off because I want to continue on, on this sermon when I preach again. I'm going somewhere. I want to close and I want to categorize the nine fruit of the Spirit into three groups and it will make more sense to you. And you will understand, understand it better. So, the first group or the first category, category A, the love, and it's all about the love of God, the love that directs our attention to God, our focus, our attention. Love, that is the first one, love, that is the first fruit also, love. God is love and He gave us His love. You can read about that in 1 John 4 verse 16. You haven't got time to look at all the scriptures, but go home and, and read it. The second one in the first category, joy. We know that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Joy. Jesus gave us his joy. The joy of the Lord. You can read about that in John 15 verse 11. The third fruit in the first category of love that directs its attention on God is peace. Jesus gave us His peace that surpasses all understanding. John 14 verse 27. So you can in, be in the midst of the storm and you can be very calm and experience the peace and the power of God. Now let's move to the, to the next category, category B or group B. The love that directs our attention to people around us. Number four, the fourth fruit, long-suffering. God has been long-suffering towards us. 2 Peter 3 verse 9. Kindness. God is kind to us in His grace. Ephesians 2 verse 7. Number six, goodness. God is good. Psalms 34 verse 8. So those are the love that directs our attention to people. Now, the last category, the third group, the love that directs our attention to ourselves. And this has got nothing to do, to do with self-righteousness or self-love. I'm, I'm talking about selfishness. It's got to do with the love of God. 
but that directs that our attention to ourselves. Number seven, faith or faithfulness. God is a God of faith and God is faithful. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 9. Gentleness also called meekness. Jesus is gentle and meek. Matthew 11 verse 29. And by the way, meekness is not weakness. People think that when you are meek as a born again believer, you are weak. And then they are surprised. Meekness is power under control. That is what meekness is. Power, the power of God under control. Meekness. And then the ninth one, the last one in this last category, the love that directs our attention to ourselves is exactly that, self-control. A spirit of a sound mind and self-control. You can read about that in 2 Timothy 1 verse 7. So the time is now to take advantage of the wonderful opportunity God is offering you and me at this very moment in order to change from the inside out, in order to be purified and sanctified and set apart because Jesus is coming for a glorified church. God's purpose for your uh, purpose for you must be lived. Not in your own power, but in the power of God that is within you. And you can, you can live your purpose by tapping into the potential in your born-again spirit. Don't put it off any longer. Don't. Allow the fruit of the Spirit and the Holy Spirit to change you from the inside out. Will you do that? Oh.